a millionaire of Japan called Miyagi. Miyagi Prefecture, more precisely. Even if you've never been to Japan, does this name sound familiar? Yes, you might remember Mr. Miyagi from the movies, Karate Kid. But as far as I've been told, there's no connection between the two things. I'm here working at the Olympics, with football more precisely, and a lot of matches happen outside of Tokyo. Miyagi is one of the venues. I'm not here to cover the event, but to work for the organization. This here, by the way, was a gift from a volunteer. This was a very important samurai here in this area in the 17th century. And actually, look closer. His hat is what inspired the stadium roof. Japan is being very strict with their protocols for foreigners coming to the Olympics, so we cannot go sightseeing or simply go for a walk on the streets. But I couldn't come to Japan and don't experience Japan. I'm actually learning so much about the culture as I'm working directly with a lot of Japanese. Ohayou gozaimasu! Domo arigatou gozaimasu! Doi tashimashite! Ichijusu! Sayonara! I wanted to find a way to share a little bit of what I'm living here. What better way than talking about the food? I cannot go to restaurants, foreigners can't at this point, but I can still try some authentic Japanese food right here in my hotel room without just opting for room service. Uber Eats! I'm in the city of Sendai, more precisely, and there are a lot of unique things here compared to most of Japan. Let's see what I can find in the next few days. I'm gonna get started with the most famous dish in Sendai, gyuton. And if you think that here in Japan there's only raw fish, you are totally wrong. Because this, my friend, this is beef tong. It smells good, like any meat. This meat here is standardized and marinated, but I heard it's harder than you'd expect. The traditional way to eat is hot, you know, grilled in a restaurant, but it can also find versions to go. It wouldn't surprise me if you can find bento boxes with gyutan. You know bento boxes, those boxes that Japanese people traditionally take on the bullet train? Ta -da. And actually, some of the most famous gyutan serving restaurants are on the train station here in Sendai. I got it in the stadium today, and as it's so unique to me, I wanted to share my first bite with you. It tastes like any meat, actually. Hmm. If nobody told me that this is beef tongue, I don't think I would know. It is, I think, slightly harder, uh, a little bit chewy, um, not that much, uh, just a little bit. Maybe it has a heavier flavor too. Um, I'm not sure, but it's not very different from meat in general. And they put a lot of onions here too. Very tasty, the onions. And in the bottom here of the box, there's rice, like most Japanese dishes. There's a sauce here too. I imagine this is yutan curry, and it is tasty. Yeah, it is good. It is good. I could never tell this is beef tong. Very well marinated, worth giving a try, especially here in Sendai, as this is the typical dish. You actually find this even at breakfast here at the hotel. Would I try this again? Yes, I would. I'd like to try hot in a sizzling plate. I imagine it might be like barbecue with the Japanese sauce. And to go along with my gyutan, I also brought here a very famous tea here in Japan. This is Sokenbicha. It's a funny name, it's an interesting name for tea. Yeah, this is tea, unsweet tea, caffeine-free tea, and zero calories. The smell really, really reminds me of uh, yerba mate, maybe even mate, as we have in Brazil. Uh, not the sweet version uh, that is sold everywhere, but the unsweet and traditional way to prepare mate. I like it because I love mate. I already gave it a try at the stadium and I thought it was so unique that I wanted to bring it here to show this to you as well. Now, this can be an acquired taste because you have to enjoy unsweet tea. And I know that especially for foreigners, it's not everyone. For me, it is perfect, as I normally have unsweet tea anyways. But it is very, very refreshing, perfect for summer here in Japan, as it is so hot and humid. And I think it's healthy. Soaking bicha. Uber Eats!
something here. Oh uh, no. This is Sunda. Traditionally, it's a sweet paste made from edamame beans and seasoned with sugar and salt. It's very, very common here in Miyagi and it's been eaten here for centuries. You can get it in different forms, like in a mochi or a shake. And I chose the shake. I love it that they deliver like this here. Mm. <laughs> it's an interesting consistency here. Um, it's like there's a lot of grains, you know? <laughs> but it's very sweet, very tasty, like a milkshake. Yeah, this is tasty. It looks like it's very filling. I heard it's healthy. Imagine, kind of like beans milkshake, but it doesn't taste like traditional beans. This is sweet. Rumor has it that way back when the samurai used to eat Sunda just before going to battle because it is a really good source of energy. And traditionally it's a paste that it seems like it's very easy to prepare. This almost reminds me of McDonald's ice cream. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'll take the chance and try two more drinks here. One is a green tea and the other one I have no idea what it is because everything is fully in Japanese. This is Georgia Japan Craftsman. Um, the only thing in English here is don't worry. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna worry. <laughs> Unsweet green tea. It reminds me a little of that um, green tea that is served at restaurants traditionally, but that one is better than this one for some reason. If you're not used to having unsweet teas, don't even try. I'd say that it's probably an acquired taste for foreigners. Mm. Cold like this is really refreshing. Mm. I really enjoy Japanese green tea. It's normally what I have when I go to restaurants, but I prefer that one that they serve at the restaurants. The bottled version is, it's all right. And for Georgia Japan Craftsman, I'll try Google Translate. <laughs> it says here black. Georgia Craftsman. Famous coffee. So it's a coffee. <laughs> Ice coffee. Now, I don't know if I'll be fair to the coffee because I traditionally don't drink coffee. I prefer tea. I needed Gordon here to try. I needed him as my guinea pig. <laughs> I'll bring him one of these then. Mm, strong smell of coffee. And sweet coffee. It's not for me. <laughs> Just plain black coffee. He would really enjoy. And look at how interesting both the coffee and the green tea belong to Coca Cola. It's bitter. <laughs> it's really bitter. When you place an order on Uber Eats, look at this, how interesting. The Apple asks if you want to give a tip. And like anywhere else in the world, you most likely would, right? But uh, Japan doesn't have a tipping culture. It can actually be considered offensive, you know, to give a tip here. So I really didn't know what to do, you know, as the app itself is asking, because when you go to restaurants, the service doesn't come included and there is not even space for you to add anything. So I asked my Japanese friends and they told me that, no, nope, in Japan, you are not expected to tip, not even if you order Uber Eats. This is more for foreigners. So don't you In the next video, you see some of the delicious chocolates in Japan. This is really, really, really good.